Hi everyone, this is Mr. West. Today we're doing a Khan Academy tutorial. This one was requested by Muhammad Yashua Khan. So thank you very much for requesting. It's been a while since we've done a request. But the topic is compare linear functions. If I do a search on compare linear functions to come up, so we're gonna go ahead and do two Khan Academies real quick just because sometimes they have duplicates and one's for the app and one's for the website. So I'm gonna do both just in case one of them matches up with what you're doing on your device. Okay, so we have two different ways that these graphs are represented. One is a table which is right here. This is a table on the top one. And we have a graph down here. And uh, we're asked that, we're asked which function decreases faster. When we're talking about increase and decrease, we're talking about the slope of a function and that is the rise over the run. If you're uh, kind of not catching up with rise over run and slope, just know that I have tons of videos where I talk about some of the more basic Khan Academies covering this topic. Um, I have notes videos, so whatever you need in terms of slope, you need a refresher, just let me know. But right here, you'll see that I talked about slope as the change in Y over the change in X. And really, that's not as necessary as you're gonna wanna know the general form. So the general form is Y equals MX plus B, where M is our slope. Okay, so my slope is M, and my Y-intercept, that's where it crosses the Y-axis. That is gonna be, whoops, I want the highlighter. That is gonna be my B, okay? So that is my Y-intercept. We're gonna refer to this often in this video, so just make sure this is what we're doing. Go ahead and pause, write it down, whatever you need. Bada beam, bada boom, here we go. So, you'll notice that we don't have an equation for either one of these, so how do we figure out what our slope is? Well, slope is defined as the change in Y over the change in X. So we're just gonna see, we, and you notice too that there's no uh, X here. The X is the independent variable. That's generally, you'll see it being marked up one at a time. So as this changes one, that's my change in X right here. Okay, as this goes up one each time, you'll notice that my Y decreases uh, looks like negative 3.5 each time. So I could write this as a slope as negative 3.5 over 1. Okay, so that's my rise is negative 3.5. It's going down each time, 3.5. And it's running, meaning moving left to right, my change in X, 1. So this is my slope. Okay, so I got my slope for the table, which is the harder of the two. Now I can move on to my graph. And what I really need here for this guy is first to erase a bunch of stuff. Okay, so sorry if you need that. I'm gonna erase it real fast here. Okay, erase, 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 erase. Okay, so I got most of the gibberish off the screen. Now we need to pick out two points. You always need two points for a line and you're gonna wanna choose the X intercept if, or sorry, Y intercept if possible. That's generally easy to see the intersection. Notice how I wouldn't pick that because it's not clear where exactly that's crossing. And it looks like it crosses exactly here. I can test it by going the same dimensions down and over again, and it looks like I'm good there. Okay, so how is my rise and run from the left point to the right? I like going left to right because that always means I have a positive run. So I'm gonna go down one, down two, down three units, and I move to the right one unit. So that would be a slope of down three. It's negative because it's going in the downward Y direction, the negative Y direction, and it's a positive one X because I'm going in the positive X direction. So my answer is negative three over one. Obviously, this guy has the bigger slope. That's a steeper slope for the table. So I need to pick the table having the bigger, decreasing, faster function. So I'm gonna pick G and we're gonna move on. Okay, now we're asked which function increases factor faster, okay? So this one's gonna be easier because we don't have a uh, table. This time it's given in our slope intercept form and you're gonna see that is my slope. So no work needed. It's always the number in front of X. So here's my slope, okay? And then my Y intercept is right next to it, the plus three. I just need to find my rise over run between two points. I'm gonna pick this one. I'm gonna use purple again. This one, and I'm gonna look for another intersection right here. So as I go left to right, I go up one, two. I'm trying to make it so you can see, and then I go right one, two, three. So that was up two, and then I went to the right three, two thirds. So basically, I need to know which one of these is 
a bigger number, a bigger decimal. So I know this decimal is about 0 0.67. This decimal right here, two divided by five is 0 0.4. So clearly this guy is the faster increaser. He has a bigger number, which means bigger slope, which means increasing faster. So that is Q, bigger slope. Next question. Okay, which one has a greater y-intercept? This is the easiest part, okay? We talked about the y-intercept is the plus b part. Um, anytime we have something crossing the y-axis, let me scroll down actually a little bit, we're going to note that the value of x at any one of those points is going to be zero. So all of these points has x equals zero. That's the, con that's the point zero six, the point zero two, zero negative two. Okay, all those have an x value of zero, as you guys probably noticed, okay? So if we go up here, we're gonna look for x value. Hey, crowded my screen. We're gonna look for an x value of zero and that will tell us our y intercept, negative 3.5. So for f of r, our y intercept is negative 3.5. Over here, where does it cross? It crosses right about here, okay? So that's negative four. So the y intercept up here, negative 3.5 for the table, that was r, I believe. This one is Q. Q has a y-intercept of negative four and it wants a greater y-intercept. Don't be fooled, this is more negative. So this guy, negative 3.5, less negative, means he's greater. So that's F, I think. Yep, F of R, he is greater. Next question, and we're on to the last one. And I think this is basically the same. Uh, just to keep the video short, I'm gonna leave it like this. And if you need that follow-up video with the other one, let me know, I'll make that video also. So I have negative 2t plus 6. I give it a function. We're looking for the y-intercept here. This is pretty easy to identify. We're looking right here. We see 4. This one we see 6. Okay. This one's clear as day for us. Obviously, g has a greater y-intercept. 6 is bigger than 4. Let's see. So we started off kind of hard and then we got a little bit easier as we went along. I appreciate you asking for this video. If you want your own video done, make sure to leave a comment with specifics on what Khan Academy, what math drills, what CUDA worksheet, whatever you need, just leave a comment and I'll be back to you as soon as I can. But either way, be sure to come back to this channel next time right here on West Explains Best. Looking forward to seeing you.